Welcome to a fun little clip from the Jurassic Park cast. Have you ever wondered how Crichton's depiction of the big Rex in his 1990 novel Jurassic Park differs from Spielberg's Rexy in the 1993 film Jurassic Park? Here's a clip from episode 16, Malcolm, back in May 2022, featuring paleontologist, tyrannosaur expert, and terrific guest, Dr. David Hone. In this clip, I argue that Tyrannosaurus, depicted by Crichton, should be envisioned in an upright posture, as in Henry Fairfield Osborne's paper, Skeletal Adaptations of Ornitholestes Struthiomimus Tyrannosaurus, published back in 1917 in the Bulletin of the American Museum of Natural History. Do you know Henry Fairfield Osborne's Skeletal Adaptations of Ornitholestes Struthiomimus Tyrannosaurus? Did you read that? I'm aware it exists. I mean, okay. Gone. But, I mean, when was that published? 30s? Uh, 1917. <laughs> yeah, quite. But, yeah. So, so it's yeah. called... Uh, I, ha I haven't dug through it of late. <laughs> no. In any case, in that paper, I think Crichton got his hands on that and then based Tyrannosaurus on that paper. Our first depiction of Tyrannosaurus in the novel is by Timmy, who says yeah. that Tyrannosaurus is, quote, the mightiest predator the Earth had ever known, which harkens back to Osborne's introductory description. And <laughs> tell me if this sounds like something from the 1917. Quote, Tyrannosaurus is the most superb carnivorous mechanism among the terrestrial vertebrata. <laughs> which is That's like right academic prose of the, saying the exact same thing. Mightiest predator the earth has ever known. Mm -hmm. In Osborne's paper, the Tyrannosaurus mount is described as AMNH 5027. That particular skeleton is at the American Museum of Natural History and shock of all shocks it's also the skeleton described specifically by Timmy in the book. Would yeah, you... so, so that's one of Crichton's classic made-up Crichton-y things. Is it? Because, yeah, that, that, that exchange is Timmy counting the tail vertebrae, yeah. saying it's got too many, and his dad goes to ask the, the museum curator or the security guard, and the curator goes, yeah, that's true, actually. Uh -huh, uh -huh. We don't know how many tail vertebrae tyrannosaurs have and have never known because we've never found a complete tail. Uh -huh. So how on earth can smart Alec Tim know that a mount has got too many bones from something that we don't know now? Yes. He just made it up because it sounded good. And that sort of criticism, it's a fictional book but it's also kind of weird and i think that's one of those things or totally derailed your comment i'm taking no, over. oh that's it's, exactly it's what i was going to say one next of those things that i was kind of talking about yeah. where he he just makes stuff up and it's like he's got a bunch of paleontologists in the credit when he do yeah it's about the film and the book and in interviews he's like, well i spoke to all these guys <laughs> it's like if you spoke to anyone about <laughs> like m and h5027 they could have pointed out half a dozen things you know, the fur killer's missing, the gastralia are missing, the arms are in slightly the wrong place, it's mm -hmm. got some weird pathology on it, we had to replace a couple of bones because they were damaged, and the teeth have fallen out the sockets, any of these things Tim mm -hmm. could have said. Yeah. But that would presumably have required some minimal effort of asking a question of any of these paleontologists. Entirely who, right. And at this one, I'll use the word, allegedly consulted or showed the manuscript to... And could have gone, can you just come up with something that's funny about your skeleton for me to put in? Or read something that wasn't trivial. 80 years old? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, so he, so he just made it up. Again, it, not a criticism as such, but the contrast between yeah. the perception people have that Crichton wrote this super detailed book where he hyper-researched dinosaurs and yeah. totally transformed our knowledge. And when you actually read it, he says nothing about them at all in any detail. Yeah. And when he yeah. does, it's usually wrong or made up, which suggests that actually he really didn't do this at all. And simply having, introducing velociraptors, these, these human-sized, intelligent, fast dinosaurs, mm -hmm. not to denigrate that, but that is pretty much the sum total of his contribution in this regard. That's right. Um, and yeah, that's, that's not what I think people take from the book with regards to dinosaurs. So in Osborne's publication, on page 47, there are 37 caudal vertebrae and the Tyrannosaurus in that manuscript. Right. So that's two fairly specific references that Crichton specifically links to Osborne's paper. Yeah. And I like to think that the posture presented, so you know that tripodal lower tail yeah, yeah, yeah. and how it's standing there, that image, that it, and it looks amazing, is... I think how Crichton made his Tyrannosaurus look when he was walking around. Uh, standing fairly erect, quite tall. And if you look at the cover, the the picture that is used in the skull for the, the logo is almost a spinning yeah, image is, of that map. Well, it, well the, the, the logo is 5027. Yeah. There's actually one of, one of those rare things, a TED Talk that's worth watching, mm -hmm. 
there's the video of the guy who did the logo design talking about how he did it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of those things that's at least slightly coincidental because, of course, he was hanging around in New York. So if you're asked to draw a dinosaur in, and you're in New York, you go to the AM and H. Yeah. And if you're going to draw a dinosaur, you're going to draw T-Rex. So guess which one they've got? So, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, think, I think that's more serendipitous that publishing houses are based in New York rather than... Crichton, Crichton certainly didn't specify that that specimen, so it's more coincidental than anything else. But again, you know, AMH five which is by far the best preserved T Rex skull out there. So of course you use it for everything, mm. and that's before the fact that it's on display in the American Museum of Natural History. Yeah, Indiana. very accessible. Yeah. So that that artist was named Chip Kid, I think. I think that was. Yeah, his name. that sounds right. In any case, there's a line where Crichton says, so Timmy's uh, got the night vision goggles on. He sees a tyrannosaur approaching the fence. He discovers, uh-oh, the fence isn't electrified because the tyrannosaur is gripping the fence. Yeah. And if uh, the, the only way I can portray in my mind a tyrannosaur, which should be like a horizontal uh, animal, could be yeah. gripping this fence without its face being in the way would be, I would think, if it had that upright erect posture i think that's what Crichton was yeah, imagining when he did it yeah that's the point but that uh, depends how depends how high the fence is of course I suppose. But, yeah uh, i think you're right i bet you that nah, that may be just, in any case those are my arguments for it i could be wrong but i yeah, think I, I mean i i i can easily buy that because as yeah as, as i was kind of saying he's, he's not done that depth of research. i think he read one paper <laughs> and that was it yeah. i think that's all of the work he did on it um, well, and those old papers, most of them were not very long and detailed either. You, know, you can skim through it in a few pages. Yeah, most of it was on Struthiomimus. <laughs> yeah. So it's very likely Crichton referred to Osborne's paper describing T-Rex to inform his depiction of the big Rex in his novel Jurassic Park. And this is encouraged by the similar descriptions of Tyrannosaurus in old-timey science speak, quote, the most superb carnivorous mechanism among the terrestrial vertebrata, from the bulletin on page 762, and in Crichton's own modern translation, quote, the mightiest predator the Earth has ever known, in Jurassic Park on page 94. Furthermore, Crichton depicts that specific specimen in the novel, having Timmy comment on it specifically to demonstrate that he has, quote, dinosaurs on the brain, further strengthening our belief that Crichton had read this paper by Osborne. And the highly specific detail Crichton included was a detail only found in Osborne's paper on plate 27 of my PDF, where the tail is comprised of caudal vertebrae C17 all the way to C53 inclusive, which is a total of 37 vertebrae, as declared by the smart Alec Tim on page 95 of Jurassic Park. We should note that Osborne was very specific that the, that the, the tail and the cervical series are, quote, the total number of caudals is conjectural. Uh, so he was admitting freely that the, the number of <laughs> tail vertebrae is unknown, but Crichton didn't care about that. That's in the fine print there. You don't see that part when you're reading it. And then Dr. Hone does a brilliant job suggesting precisely why AMNH5027 is an excellent referential specimen if you are planning on depicting a Tyrannosaurus, further supporting the idea that this is the foundations upon which Crichton imagined his big racks, as well as arguing that much of Crichton's science fiction is predominantly fiction and not science. Uh, and finally, there's a single action by the Big Rex, which could only be performed from an upright position as depicted in Osborne's early 20th century paper. He grips the fence with his front claws. So what do you think? Have we made the case? While it's never stated outright in the novel, I'm fairly confident we can picture the Big Rex as imagined by Michael Crichton in an upright posture, stamping down electric fences, lunging into the foliage above the river, and plunging its head through the waterfalls. All right, if you like this, please check out the entire episode 16, Malcolm, featuring the rest of my chat with Dr. David Hone on paleontology and Jurassic Park by listening to the Jurassic Park cast. Um, you can find the show wherever you listen to podcasts by searching for the Jurassic Park cast. It's the only podcast with the hyphens in there like that, where guests chat with me about Michael Crichton's 1990 novel Jurassic Park, and also not that too. 